Hey kittens, it's PC Purse and I'm back for another episode of A Dancer Reviews where a dancer think is going to review a music video, movie, show, etc. that has something to do with Paul. Right now we're doing Jocelyn's Cabaret, Las Vegas. We're on episode 7. So let's get into it. So you already know we're starting this episode with Jocelyn talking to Ballistic and then talking about the events at the pool party with Kay Capri and the girls. And then Jocelyn starts talking about the upcoming event, the opening night of the cabaret. So she says it's going to be something different. They're not going to be showing TNA like they usually do. There's no nudity. And she says it's going to be like a more upscale thing. This is what she's been preaching forever. And then she says the losers can't come because they're just going to bring bad energy to the situation. So they got to stay home. But she keeps emphasizing it's not a strip club. So then next we see Riri, Jordan, Lexi getting their hair and makeup done, just getting touch-ups. And then Wet Wet comes back. So she stops to talk to the girls. She stops to say congratulations. And that's basically it. Then Lexi's kind of looking at her like, okay, back in the house. Let's see how this goes. We don't really get to see how it goes this episode. We just know she's back. Also... Most of the season, I have not liked Lexi Blow's hair or looks, but this ponytail is so cute. And one of the things I loved about last season, like the cabaret is really like a French thing, and she always gave me Parisian cabaret vibes last season. So this this episode with the ponytail and those long swoops, it was doing it for me. It was really cute. Okay, so next we have the girls who are not going to be in the first episode of the cabaret. So Raven, Black Diamond, who's got her arm in a sling, Kay Capri... They're sitting outside talking, and then Chanel comes. So, K. Capri is updating Chanel on what happened with Lollipop because Chanel wasn't there for it. And Chanel's basically like, we're not here for this. Like, eh, just put it to the side. We don't need to be fighting. But the thing is, K. Capri is upset because Lollipop brought to their attention a conversation that was had in private. So like I said, I told you she said something to that effect. She said she was talking with Jocelyn like it was an off-camera thing. Nothing negative was said. Y'all were talking about how those two girls couldn't dance and it got back to them. And she's mad that it came out. And at the end of the day, like, it's all just gossipy BS. Like, I don't, I don't think it's anything to get that worked up over. And, like, everybody keeps saying, we're not here to make friends. We're here to dance. So, so anyway... Chanel, at the end of that conversation, is like, let's just go practice. And of course, what do we not see? We don't see them practice. <sighs> so then the winners are still getting ready. And it's just funny because Lolly Bob is sitting around kind of like wet, wet. She got a breast out, but she got a waist trainer on, penguin slippers. It was just like, okay, girl. <laughs> she was cute, though. It was just funny. And she wasn't being loud and annoying. It was just the whole titties out situation then we see them get to the venue finally and they're getting ready and someone messed with amber's clothing so they show the dress and it looks like somebody was poking it with like needles or pins or something <laughs> it's got like little runs in it and she said some of her stuff is missing and hennessy too that's her roommate so somebody in the house is feeling some type of way about her and i don't blame them but we see the venue and i'm just thinking I don't remember how many episodes ago it was that I told you guys the venue wasn't doing it for me. I thought the stage setup was weird for a cabaret performance. I thought like it wasn't going to show Jocelyn as like the headline and the other girls featuring her. I just thought the placement wasn't right. And when the, when, like, the performances started, I still feel that way. The red carpet goes really well. Even though Amber's outfit was messed up, Jocelyn didn't seem to notice, so she didn't get in trouble. And they all looked really nice. They all had a different vibe about them. Like, you could find each of them maybe in a different type of club. I thought that was kind of, like, an interesting thing. It kind of, like, it could have been really cool, but we getting there. We getting there. So then the performance. Y'all. It's not giving cabaret. It's not giving cabaret, but let's talk about what it is giving. So it is giving Jocelyn coming out, a little bit of choreography from last season, some new moves, lip syncing, a lot, a lot of light, just very bright in there, and no seating, no space. You know, I, I think she's happy about the fact that this one is, is full. Last season when they did the cabaret, it wasn't like a full venue. This is a full venue, but it's not 
a cabaret. So Jocelyn comes out and it's so funny that she didn't let Chanel do this opening because everything she criticized Chanel for, you can criticize her for. She came out in a cute little outfit, but it wasn't spectacular. There was no feathers, no this, no that. It was just a G-string and a top. I don't know why she didn't come out in like that big pink feather hat from last season and like a boat like put on a grand show and let one of the other girls dance and do all the complicated stuff also she slipped last season she went in on Chanel when her little ankle went out and it was the biggest thing in the world she slipped on stage and she's the performer and like <laughs> Zeus didn't even cut it out they let us see the little <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm. Chanel gonna watch this episode back like mm-hmm mm-hmm that's what you get so then finally the girls come out on the stage and they're dancing and of course there's no choreography there's no like rhyme or reason to anything um riri said that she was gonna have like a little spotlight thing on her so she's the only one that we actually well yeah she's the only one that we really see on the pole dancing <laughs> the other girls are just on the floor lexi is like working the floor Lord, I don't know what Amber was doing. First of all, it looked like she found some cut to hide in and dance like where nobody could see her. Except for when she was on the stage trying to twerk. And it just, it was not going over well. I think Lollipop was just mostly standing there just jiggling, twerking. And Lexi was working the floor doing what she normally does. So after that song goes off, the girls are still like on the stage like, okay, we're vibing, yay! <laughs> not knowing what to do. And Jocelyn is like, I told y'all before not to stay on the stage. Go work the floor. Pop that coochie. And it's like, you told them not to show it. And now you t contradicted herself. So some of the girls are out on the floor. Some of them are still on the stage. Even Lexi Blow was like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. After the cabaret is over, Lollipop and Lexi Blow get into an argument because it seems like when they were on the stage, somebody made it rain on... Lexi Blow and she intended to keep that money and Lollipop is like where's my cut of it and so it seems like once somebody says something to Lexi Blow she was like well I was always gonna split it up I don't know if she really was and Lollipop is just like somebody get me a trash bag because I'll go get my own money and then Amber is kind of coming at Lollipop like oh you pressed about the money even though she's saying that she's not and then at the very end we see Jocelyn talking to the winners and she doesn't say anything about being upset. She just says that Lexi Blow and Riri got the most praise throughout the night, that they did good, and that's it for this episode. There really wasn't much in this episode. Um, and that's crazy because this is the episode we finally get to see the grand opening of the cabaret. So you would think we'd get to see like some spectacular thing. But what we saw is that Jocelyn's cabaret is not a cabaret whatsoever this thing that she's been talking up this high class experience it was not that it was very much so giving i'm going to give a performance in a strip club there are some strip clubs that kind of operate like that where people can go and do performances and they're kind of known as those type of venues this was given that and it was also given the rapper just so happens to be one of the dancers so like while she's up there giving a the mic because she's going to do her thing i think we've all had questions from the beginning of it like what is this cabaret because the way Jocelyn talked it up was like a high class experience. I don't think Jocelyn really knows what she wants or I don't think Jocelyn really has a clear definition. So let, let's first talk about what a cabaret is, right? Traditionally a cabaret is like a place where there's, you know, entertainment, music and like a, a and also dining. There's seated spaces where people can sit <laughs> and eat and then there's entertainment and it is a place for like free flowing energy and usually like a smaller crowd so some of what was there had cabaret elements but it wasn't a high class environment first of all it was just packed to the brim there was no space for anyone to do anything other than just stand and mob the crowd that's not a cabaret um it was kind of more like a listening party, you know, with just her performing and a few backup dancers. It, it really was not a cabaret. So for people who are not used to like strip club culture, I want to explain to you what the whole trash bag thing was. Um, in clubs where the girls make a lot of money and tons and tons of money is thrown on stage, they just kind of sweep it up 
like with brooms and they'll put your money in a trash bag and it, it depends on how the club is but they might write your name on it and toss it to the side so that you can get it later or they might collect it and you keep it somewhere near you or if you have big enough bags maybe you can collect it but she's talking about clubs where they throw so much money that you have a trash bag with your money and in the end of the night with that bag is yours right so she's saying I'll get my own bag and I'll get my own money I don't need to keep whatever money you got that's on you um, also the tipping etiquette, some people might feel like since somebody specifically threw money on Lexi Blow that the money should be hers. And other people might feel like everybody should get a cut of it because they're all working together as a team. And I think that that would have been clearer for the girls had Jocelyn made it clearer to them. She should have established some type of rule like, hey, you guys are pooling your tips, whatever you guys make, y'all sharing it collectively. Or told them, hey, if somebody throws something on you specifically, then it's yours. Um... I'm torn in terms of how I feel about it because I feel like they're a group so to me that I kind of feel like they should share it but I also feel like if it was specifically for her she should have gotten it I don't know it depends on how many people were on the stage when the money was thrown like if they were up there together working as a group maybe they should have to share it I don't know I think Jocelyn should kind of come in and regulate that since they're having issues with it but I think what we're seeing is Jocelyn didn't have a clear vision or plan. Normally I try to just give you guys the positive from every episode but I'm really disappointed in this episode because I really feel like Jocelyn had a good idea and she didn't trust in it enough. I think she's so focused on wanting to be an artist that she didn't really give herself credit nor did she really work as hard as she should have to execute this idea. I think this was like quick promo for her music instead of really trying to make something tangible for herself out of this. I mean, when you think about Cabaret, you might think about like, for me, I think about Josephine Baker. I think about Moulin Rouge. And I know those are outdated things, but what Jocelyn had was more just like a club appearance, listening party, just regular, artist show you know she didn't need to have a competition for this you would think that with the competition there would be certain moves that the girls need to be able to do or something specific that they bring to the table to help make her music look better to make her performances look better and so last season when they were trying to learn choreography the choreography really wasn't amazing and I think she got negative feedback for that so that's why we're not seeing choreography this season but it's missed part of the fun of last season was watching the girls try to rehearse the stuff and try to get it together and I honestly don't mind that the girls go up there and freestyle because if you really have solid technique and skill you can go up there and freestyle and make magic right it's kind of like theater it's always something a little bit different but even this venue wasn't set up great for a cabaret when Jocelyn stopped off the stage she got lost in the crowd there was no walking space there was no performance space it was just her literally touching the crowd and she wanted the girls to work the club like a strip club but she wanted them to walk through there was no way for people to get a, a clear vision of things going on also it was so bright in there no it takes some of the mystique away from it and a cabaret is supposed to be sexy I mean, it's not supposed to be a dark CD place but it is supposed to be ambient lighting think about any show you've ever gone to the first thing they do is dim the lights they don't turn the lights up the lights will all the way turn up in there it's like also Jocelyn's not a pole dancer she was a stripper not all strippers are pole dancers. By that I mean Jocelyn is like Black Diamond and Rape. She can twerk. And they really should have just let Jocelyn focus on actually performing her music. And in the background should have been the girls dancing and doing their thing. But honestly, she picked the wrong girls. I'm going to tell you the girl she should have had. And it's a mix of last year and this year. She should have picked Miss Natural, Sapphire, Lucky, Chanel, Lexi Blow, and then from this season, Riri and Lollipop. Those are her seven dancers. Honestly, she had her top five from last season, but we got two from this season. Those should have been her dancers. They all would have brought something different. Riri would have brought pole stuff, and then she did her little two-second fire trick of setting her boobs on fire. Cute, okay? Chanel could have worked the pole, the floor, and the crowd. Lexi Blow, pole, floor, crowd. Uh, Sapphire, pole, floor, crowd. And she was thick, so she brought that. Lucky, definitely, probably all three, but especially 
the pole. Um, Miss Natural could have worked the floor, the pole, maybe the crowd. And Lollipop could have worked all three. She would have had a nice mix of skin tones, nice mix of body shapes, nice mix of abilities. And they all could have done something different. They all would have brought different elements to the cabaret. And they all would have made her look good because they all had the ability to kind of appeal to a mass audience. And Vegas really was the perfect place for this because it has the history of showgirls, also of strip clubs, and also of real musicians, high caliber musicians coming to do residencies. And it really could have been like a high class fusion, old school cabaret style with like new school music and dancing and all that. And it really could have been a great thing, but that's not what we're getting. She just wanted to promote her new music and she could have done that a different way. To sum it all up, I don't think Jocelyn understood her own assignment. I think she wanted to do her own performance with go-go style dancers behind her. So today we're going to talk about the different types of clubs and what you can expect there. So whether you're going as a patron or if you're going as somebody that would like to be an employee there, we're going to talk about the things that you need to know so that you can have the best experience possible and just know what you're getting into. So the first club is a nude club. In a nude club, sounds just like his name, you are completely nude, no clothes. Top comes off, bottom comes off. There might be some rules about when it happens. Um, you might not be able to be on the floor completely nude, but when you get up on stage or perhaps when you do private dances, you might be able to be nude. Also, there are sometimes rules about if alcohol can be served in those establishments. I know in New York, um, I don't think you can have uh, all nude and alcohol. But in some states, it might be legal. Every state has different rules when it comes to all aspects of, of strip clubs. So you really, if you want to work somewhere, you need to kind of check what the laws in your state are or what's going on with your club. But a lot of the clubs enforce a no-touching rule when it's all nude. But again, that kind of varies by state and, and club. Gentlemen's clubs are more of an upscale establishment. The girls usually wear gowns or dresses and maybe a G-string. They don't usually wear boots. They have a lot more rules, even for the girls. You might actually get somebody to walk you through the job and tell you what's expected. You might get a rule, but like you could get, it's run more of like a corporate type of situation. The bouncers are usually a little bit better about getting crazy customers out of there. And they should be protecting their dancers a little bit more since it's corporate run, but that's, of course, not always the case. But they also usually have really good food in those clubs. People go there for business meetings. It's definitely more of an upscale environment. And they tend to be more picky with the body types. They tend to prefer slimmer girls. So if you're looking for thick, bootylicious girls, a gentleman's club is probably not the spot for you. Topless clubs are probably the most well-known type of club. I think it's the one that most people think of. Uh, women can keep their bottoms on, but the tops come off. So in these clubs, sometimes there are pasties, sometimes no pasties. Things really vary in this type of club. Depends on the type of club too. If it's a little hole in the wall spot, maybe a bigger establishment, uh, the clientele that comes in there. It, this is really like the biggest area to me of strip clubs because it's kind of like smorgasbord of stuff that could go on but uh, shoes styles can vary depending on the club clothing styles vary depending on the club too but this is usually more of like a anything kind of go situation in terms of what you can wear on your body and on your feet hair might be a little bit more lenient in gentlemen's clubs usually sleeker styles you can probably be a little more creative in a topless club and Alcohol is usually served. Also, the rules for touching vary depending on the club and the state. Another type of club is the lap dance club. I don't know if a lot of people know about this. Um, in this type of club, there's usually no pole. So <laughs> to me, that could be a little bit more intimidating because you really have to be up close and personal with customers. The girls there usually wear lingerie and they don't usually wear stripper shoes, maybe the sandals or regular like sexy very high heel shoes but not necessarily the clear lucite heels definitely not the boots um and yeah you kind of maybe sit around at a bar in lingerie and then maybe there's a room in the back different type of club not really a strip club to me since there's no pole but yeah lastly go-go clubs which 
might be kind of my favorite. Go-Go Clubs, you keep your bikini on. So your top and your bottom stay on the whole night. You don't take it off. Sometimes there are a lot of rules about no touching. Um, some places might have lap dances, some others might not. Some of the places have rules about what you can wear on the bottom. So you might not be able to wear a G-string. You might have to wear something that covers a little bit more. There are different types of, of G-strings. So that might be a legality issue. Also, some places don't allow slingshots or some places might require you to have something tied around your waist so that everything isn't exposed when you're walking around on the floor. All types of rules. Again, it depends on the state and the club itself. But in this place, you don't get nude. And like I said, there might be rules about no touching. So if you are looking to go to one of these clubs as a patron, know the different types of clubs so you know what to expect. If you go into a go-go club expecting them to take off all their clothes and let you touch them, you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> if you go to an all nude club and maybe think that you're gonna be able to drink something, you might not depending on what state you're in. Um, various things to consider. If you're looking for employment, it's good to know these things so that you can choose where you're going to work at depending on what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with all nude, it's not the place you want to apply for because they're not going to bend for you. So think about these things. Another thing, if you are looking for employment and you're not sure about what club to choose, one thing you should always do is call them up and ask what the requirements are. We'll talk about that at a later date. But definitely know that there are various types of clubs and there are a few others that are kind of something in between the ones we discussed today but <sighs> yeah it's a lot of stuff out there so just know what you're getting into and be safe so coming back to jocelyn let's see what she does for the other episodes i hope you learned something today if you have any other tips about the types of strip clubs that there are drop me a note um Follow me on my socials, look out for more episodes, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Meow.